A thunderous cross check resonated through a packed arena, and a bone-crushing hit transformed a playoff night into a harrowing tale. It was a hit that turned a player's night into a horror story. Brace yourself as we delve into the NHL's most jaw-dropping intent to injure moments. On February 6, 2016, the Philadelphia Flyers and the New York Rangers clashed on the ice. But the real drama unfolded when Wayne Simmons, the Flyers forward, decided to take on Ryan McDonough. With the clock ticking down to the intermission, a cross-check from McDonough met Simmons' face. Not one to back down, Simmons retaliated with a swift slash and a punch. In the aftermath, Simmons got the boot with a match penalty, while McDonough took a short break with a double minor. Up next, February 23rd, 2016, saw the New York Rangers and the New Jersey Devils in a fierce face-off. But as the second period was about to wrap up, JT Miller of the Rangers had a bone to pick with Sergei Kalinin. The two tussled, but Miller's tape knuckles stole the show. When Kalinin got a cut from the brawl, the refs were quick to point out Rule 46.15. Miller's taped up hands had landed him in hot water, earning him a match penalty. March 2nd, 2019 was more than just a game between the Calgary Flames and Minnesota Wild. Early in the second period, Garnet Hathaway, the Flames forward, showcased a move that would have been more at home in a wrestling ring. Dodging a hit, he took the opportunity to slam Luke Cunnan's head right into the boards by the Wilds bench. The crowd gasped as Cunnan, the Wilds young forward, felt the full force of Hathaway's wrath. It was April 6, 2014, a night that would live in infamy for fans of the Philadelphia Flyers and Buffalo Sabres. In the third period, Zach Ronaldo crashed into Chad Ruedel, leaving fans and players alike in shock. The hit was a recipe for disaster, leading to Ronaldo's ejection and a power play for the Sabres. Though Ruedel left with a concussion, the Flyers soared to a 5-2 victory. The stage was set on May 30th, 2021 for an epic playoff showdown between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Colorado Avalanche. But as the third period drama unfolded, Ryan Reeves, known for his hard hits, took things too far. In a post-whistle frenzy, he zeroed in on Ryan Graves, unleashing a fury that left fans gasping and Graves grasping. A punch, a shove, and a knee later, Reeves found himself slapped with a match penalty. It was a moment that blurred the lines between passion and sheer recklessness. May 24, 2023 was supposed to be just another playoff game between the Dallas Stars and the Vegas Golden Knights. But just moments into the first period, Jamie Benn, captain of the Stars, crossed a line, literally. He unleashed it all on Mark Stone with a cross check that echoed across the rink. The refs were swift, and Ben's night was cut short just 42 seconds into his game time. March 29, 2016 wasn't just another game night for the Chicago Blackhawks and the Minnesota Wild, especially for Duncan Keith. After a legal check from Charlie Coyle sent him sprawling on the ice, Keith's frustration boiled over. In a moment of sheer retaliation, he swung his stick, catching Coyle right across the face. Blood and disbelief spilled onto the ice. Keith's night ended there, ejected for his reckless swing, leaving a stain on the game. The playoffs are a pressure cooker, and on May 11, 2023, it blew its lid. The Vegas Golden Knights were facing the Edmonton Oilers, and Alex Petrangelo carried the weight of the game on his shoulders. But with the Oilers leading 4-1, Petrangelo slashed on Leon Dreisaitl and screamed his frustration. And when Connor McDavid stepped in, the ice turned into a battlefield. However, Petrangelo's slash cost him a seat in the crucial Game 5. March 25, 2023 was a day of reckoning in the rink for the Los Angeles Kings and the Winnipeg Jets. With the clock ticking down in the second period, Lazat's stick crashed into Josh Morrissey's face, a move that shocked spectators and players alike. The ref's verdict was swift. Lazat was out, but the league's gavel came down harder, marking him with a one-game suspension. 
March 8, 2007, was a night of high tension between the New York Islanders and the New York Rangers. The ice was a stage, and Chris Simon was about to turn the third period into a horror show. After a crushing check from Ryan Hallweg, Simon, fueled by rage, swung his stick like a weapon, striking Hallweg in a moment that left spectators in shock. The aftermath was a record-breaking 25-game suspension for Simon, turning his retaliation into a cautionary tale. On April 21st, 2015, Tom Wilson of the Washington Capitals became a human wrecking ball. Fresh from the penalty box and with adrenaline pumping, Wilson set his sights on Lubomir Vishnovsky of the New York Islanders. The hit was monstrous, sending shockwaves through the arena and Vishnovsky out of the game. April 17, 2012 saw the Boston Bruins and the Washington Capitals locked in a playoff struggle. But it was a battle at the boards that stole the show. Fueled by a mix of frustration and retaliation, Nicholas Backstrom delivered a cross-check to Rich Peverly's face, earning not just a penalty, but the ire of fans and players alike. Backstrom called it stupid, an understatement for a move that cost his team dearly. Check out more of our hard-hitting videos, and check out our newest video, NHL's Head-to-Head -head Collisions. The ice rink transforms into a battleground when the NHL's biggest and strongest players throw their weight around. The world of the NHL is not just about scoring. Here, finesse meets fury. Well, again, Hosa. It looks like and he jumped on the play. Left yeah, it looked like he jumped on the play and left. While some players use their speed, agility, and quickness to their advantage, others use their strength, size, and power. They could decide to make a call and review it, but I think he goes through the center core of the body. Dive with us into the NHL's most brutal open ice hits and witness the power of the game. Strap in for a wild ride through the hardest hits in hockey history. During the 2003 Stanley Cup playoffs, Carolina and the Islanders turned up the heat. And as you might expect, things getting... Netchass was skating fast, puck in sight, right next to the Islanders' bench. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Pajot appeared and boom! Gets flipped into the bench by Pajot! And then down went... Shoulder to shoulder, Netchass found himself taking an unplanned visit to the Islanders' bench. He didn't even see it coming. Netchass got up, and out of frustration, he threw a punch at a seated Islander as if saying, this is my spot. Despite this drama, Netchass hopped back and there was no punishment from the on-ice officials. Heat wasn't confined to that matchup alone. In a Game 7 between the New York Rangers and New Jersey Devils, Truba gave us a moment to remember. As Meyer skated in, dodging sticks and showing off some slick moves, he found himself slightly off balance. Truba saw a chance. Timo Meyer. Oh, oh, blasted by Truba and not getting up. With a hit that could make the earth shake, he smashed into Meyer. Making the ice seem like a trampoline, Meyer dropped like a sack of potatoes, and the Devils were screaming for a five on three man advantage. But the referees were too stunned by that seismic hit because no penalty was called. Truba's hit was so intense, you'd think Meyer's ancestors were taking notes. If you thought that was intense, the Minnesota Wild and Dallas Stars had something more jaw-dropping in store on that Stanley Cup opening night. Picture this, time slows down, the crowd holds its breath. Pavelski flicks a backhand towards the net, eyes on the puck, unaware of the freight train coming his way. Pavelski in the left point corner, backhand to the outside of the net, and goes flying! He gets blown up by Dumba! Pavelski is here! Dumba smashes him from the side. Pavelski sent flying, his head violently meeting the cold, unforgiving ice. An eerie hush falls over the crowd. Pavelski's motionless for a moment before later being helped off for medical attention. The referees shrugged it off because no headshot was involved, so no major penalty. 
but everyone watching, they'd swear Dumba's hit echoed through hockey history. Meanwhile, over in another corner of the NHL universe, Dmitry Orlov showed Matt Duchesne the meaning of a one-way fight. While the Avalanche forward thought he could breeze past the Capitals' defenseman, Orlov had other plans. With a drop of the shoulder and a bit of spring in his step, Duchesne was suddenly auditioning for the next Superman film. This was no mere body check, it was a collision heard around the league. What a hip check, that might be the best one I've seen in the last 10 seasons plus. What People in the arena could feel the impact, and fans at home replayed the clip in disbelief. It was a hit that became a highlight of the season, showcasing Orlov's raw power and flawless timing. Amidst all these high-octane plays, Makar decided to sprinkle in his own brand of magic. In the middle of a heated match, he saw McCann and thought, why not give him a little hello? After McCann's almost goal got shut down by goalie Georgiev, even though the puck was chilling somewhere else, Makar delivered a thumping hit to make McCann feel his presence. The refs called it interference. First thinking it was so fierce, it deserved a five minute penalty. But then they had a change of heart. But the video replay said, hold on a minute. Though the refs took it down a notch, the NHL had a chit chat with star player Kale McCarr. And star player Kale McCarr got benched for game five as a penalty. Some say his hit was so hard, the puck itself felt sympathy. And just when you thought the thrills were over, Truba showed us again why he's one of the biggest hitters in the game. During a face-off against the Calgary Flames, Kadri of the Flames probably thought he was skating at Madison Square Garden, not Truba's slam zone. And boom. Truba's hit was so huge, it sent Kadri's helmet into another zip code. Dubé, Kadri's buddy, tried to step in, probably thinking he could take on Truba. The two tangoed for a bit, but Truba was like, hold my hockey stick. Truba threw a few punches to give Dubé a taste of his fists. It ended with Dubé on the floor, probably wishing he just stayed in bed that day. Shifting the focus, let's journey to an unforgettable showdown between the Toronto Maple Leafs and Tampa Bay Lightning. Barely five minutes into the third period, Braden Point's world went black. Out of nowhere, Morgan Riley, like a missile, slammed him into the board. Braden lay there, dazed, trying to catch his breath. But that wasn't the end. Matthews and Stamkos, two of NHL's elite, decided to have a mini dance-off, exchanging punches like MMA fighters. And this incident created a weird record of the first fight between two 60-goal scorers. Now, rewinding the clock to 2012, the rink witnessed a seismic moment. Rafi Torres of the Coyotes decided to take flight. His target, the unsuspecting Marion Hossa from the Blackhawks. Well, again, Hossa. It looks like he jumped on the play. Left yeah, it looked like he jumped on the play. And left As Hossa crashed onto the ice, time seemed to freeze. Every eye was glued to him, lying there, helpless and still. You could almost hear heart skip beats as he was stretched to the hospital. Meanwhile, the NHL didn't go easy on Torres. They slapped him with a whopping 25-game suspension. In hockey years, that's an eternity. And for the kicker, for every game he warmed the bench, $20,000 slipped away from his pocket. No wonder he looked like he dropped his last puck. Stepping into a season of heated grudges, the Blackhawks clashed with the Blues, and Seabrook took center stage. He slammed into Blues captain David Backus with the force of a runaway train, sending him face first into dreamland right there on the ice. The hit was so brutal, it probably made the puck wince. His Blues mates were not happy, and they flew into action, standing up for their down leader. But here's the kicker. When Bacchus tried to rise, he looked more like a toddler learning to walk. Legs wobbly, eyes glazed, trying to stand. But gravity was being extra stubborn that day. 
Seabrook's hit was so fierce, the officials tossed him a game misconduct penalty and a free game vacation. As for Bacchus, that hit ended his game night and gave him a headache he wouldn't forget. Fast forwarding to the 2021 playoffs, Ryan Reeves of the Vegas Golden Knights showcased his reputation as a muscle man. In a showdown with Detroit, Reeves made the arena shake when he flattened Philip Hironek. The guy was just gliding, minding his own business when Reeves came out of nowhere. It was like watching a truck hit a scooter. Hironek's face got a close-up of Reeves' shoulder, and suddenly, it looked like he was auditioning for a horror movie. No whistle from the ref, and no penalty was called out. And he scratched their heads, wondering, was it Hironek's fault for being unaware, or did Reeves take a free shot? All in all, that hit was big. Shifting to the 2023 playoffs, it was Leafs defender Jake McCabe's turn to rewrite the rules. While Essamont had his eyes on the offensive zone, McCabe gave him a sudden detour. That hit was so fierce, it probably shifted the Earth's axis a tiny bit. Essamont, probably thinking he'd stepped into an alternate universe, managed to hobble to the bench. Word is, even the concussion spotter felt that one from the sidelines. While the play was rougher than a bear hug with actual bears, no penalty was called. Maybe the referees were too shocked, or perhaps they were too worried about McCabe's next move. As for Patrick Laine, he looked so dazed, you'd think he saw his entire hockey life flash before his eyes. Lastly, the intensity reached its zenith in a fiery clash between the Hurricanes and Panthers. Bennett, a force of nature on skates, seized an opportunity. Slavin, momentarily focused on the puck, was blindsided by Bennett's freight train-like charge. A collision of titans unfolded as Bennett's shoulder connected, propelling the towering Slavin off his feet. The arena held its breath as the game screeched to a halt. Slavin took a little detour into the net, looking like he'd just tried ice dancing for the first time. Despite his best efforts, he needed help off the rink and into the locker room. Bennett's tackle was so intense, it probably registered on the Richter scale. Now, if you want more thrilling dives into the world of NHL, check out some of our newest videos, NHL's Most Brutal Referee Injuries. From getting slashed in the face to blocking a 100 mile per hour shot in the chest, NHL players truly do put it all on the line. Be prepared to be shocked as we relive these tragedies and find out just why these injuries are remembered as some of the worst in NHL history. First up, we got the Avs top scorer, Nathan McKinnon. The game had just started. Less than four minutes into the game, the Avs were ready to start the game strong. Captain Landeskog chipped the puck back to the neutral zone. This should have been a simple breakout play. However, things went south real fast. As McKinnon gets ready to tangle through the neutral zone, he catches a nasty hit from Taylor Hall, clipping him up high. The arena goes silent, even those in white and yellow holding their breath. McKinnon lay on the ice, blood gushing out of his head and nose, staining the ice. Upon replay, we can see that it was a clean hit, but it was definitely a close one since that elbow did catch him pretty high up. Clean or dirty, we'll let you guys decide that in the comments. Next up we got John Tavares, who got caught with a nasty slapper to the leg. In an intense game between the Leafs and the Knights, Rasmus Sandin sends an absolute bomb towards the net. But instead of going top shelf, it clocks the Leafs' captain right in the back of the leg. If you've ever played ice hockey, you know exactly how much that hurts. He tried skating it off, but eventually realized that it wasn't possible. Tavares was forced to leave the game and did not end up returning. That's going to be one awkward locker room post-game. <laughs> Speaking of trying to skate it off, Mika Zibanejad probably regrets trying to knock Panthers forward Riley Smith off the puck as he goes hard into the boards. The impact of his legs crashing into the boards can be heard echoing through the whole arena. Zibby tries getting up but quickly realizes he can't. His goalie, Henrik Lundqvist, goes to check up on him as the referee blows the play dead. The replay shows Zibanejad getting his legs tangled between Smith's feet, causing him to go sliding hard into the end boards, feet first. The way his leg bends behind him is truly gruesome. 
Thankfully though, Zibby came back from that injury stronger and better and put up career highs. Viewers beware, if you get squeamish from seeing blood, you might want to skip this one. The date was November 8th, 2022. Edmonton vs Tampa Bay. Four minutes into the second, Myers body checks Evander Kane. Now the hit was totally clean, but what happened next nearly ended Evander Kane's career. As Patrick Maroon tries to skate to the puck, he accidentally skates right over Kane's bare wrist. Luckily for Kane, he rushed over down, to the bench right away and went straight to the medics. Whew, that was a close call. Penguins forward Marcus Pedersen decides to hit TJ Oshie with a bit of a greasy trip. TJ ain't letting this slide though. Immediately in the next play, Pedersen tries to receive a cross ice pass, but TJ Oshie absolutely so obliterates him. To keep the Smith in after the first period has proved to be. Now, this hit was definitely not clean, but I'm sure Pedersen learned a very valuable lesson here today. On the topic of dirty hits, we got one of the most controversial hits in recent years. Imagine this, game seven, round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Your team's up by the three with 10 minutes left in the game and you already beginning to think about round two. Little did you know, everything was about to change. During the faceoff, Sharks captain Joe Pavelski got caught with a cross check and stumbled off balance. Just as he was about to catch his balance, he was violently shoved down to the ice by Cody Eakin. Immediately, you could tell something was wrong. Pavelski lay there motionless, blood dripping down from the sides of his helmet. The arena went silent as they prayed for their motionless captain. Pavelski was helped off the ice and he did not return. Now, here's where the story gets even more interesting. The Sharks managed to score four goals on the power play and eventually went on to win the game. They truly rallied together and played for their captain. Thankfully, Pavelski made a full recovery. Moving on to another truly gut-wrenching injury, it was the classic rivalry between the Habs and the Bruins. 20 seconds left in the second. However, what was about to happen was one of the scariest moments in hockey history. A young Max Pacioretty was battling against the boards with big man Zdeno Chara when he was body checked straight into the sharp stanchion, separating the glass from the benches. His neck snapped backwards and he lay there on the ice, unconscious and unresponsive as his head hit the ice. The arena was silent as both teams sat there contemplating what they had just witnessed. Both teams' medical staffs rushed onto the ice and immediately began to check vitals. Thankfully, Max was breathing. However, he had broken his neck. He was immediately rushed to the hospital and did not return the following season. This injury actually caused a rule change in the NHL. The NHL stadiums were amended to include rounded stanchions instead of sharp corners to avoid similar injuries in future seasons. Now, let's throw it back to 2010. Vancouver Canucks were aiming to make their playoff push. In an intense game with their rivals, the Chicago Blackhawks, Sammy Sallow blocked one of the worst shots in NHL history. With less than one second left in the first period, Duncan Keith hit a bombshell of a slapper towards Luongo. Unfortunately for Sammy, that shot redirected and hit him right in the <clears throat> money makers. He was later stretchered off and immediately rushed to the hospital. This block would earn Sammy the nickname Balls of Steel. Sammy Sallow, more like Sammy Solo. Next up, we got another gruesome injury caused by a slapper. Minnesota Wild forward Nick Benino passes a bouncing puck to Matt Dumba, who absolutely sends that shit to the net. Unfortunately, he hits LA Kings defenseman Walker dead center in the side of the head. If it wasn't for his visor, Walker probably wouldn't be able to play another game again. He quickly rushes over to the bench, leaving a trail of blood behind him as a reminder of the importance of safety equipment in hockey. Walker is definitely going to reconsider blocking shots from now on out. Last but not least, we got a horrifying hit that nearly snapped Connor Murphy's leg in half. It all started from a simple dump and chase. Connor Murphy skated toward the boards to collect the puck in hopes of setting up a play in the offensive zone. All of a sudden, Parker Kelly comes flying in with a monster hit that sends Connor crumbling to the ice. 
Now, while this hit may seem dirty, if you take a closer look, you realize that at the last minute, Connor Murphy changed his posture, but it was too late as Kelly had already committed to the hit. Murphy lay there on the ice with his leg outstretched in an awkward position. He was quickly stretchered off the ice and did not return to the game. Now for an honorable mention. If you're a Leafs fan, you definitely felt your heart drop when you saw this hit. During a play, John Tavares got bulldozed by a Habs player. However, while he's falling to the ice, he gets smoked by a knee from Corey Perry straight to the face. He lay there nearly unconscious while the trainers tried to stretcher him off. He managed to even give the crowds a thumbs up as he was stretchered off the ice. What a trooper, man. As we look back on the 2022 NHL season and some of the earlier seasons, it's hard not to look away from the gruesome injuries that these players had to endure. From broken bones to blocked shots to near fatal skate cuts, these NHL players have paid the ultimate price for their love of the game. Imagine you're skating down the ice, and then all of a sudden, boom, you get absolutely laid out. Hockey isn't all fun in games, at least when you're the one taking the hit. But hey, for us fans, we love to see it. Here are 15 of some of the biggest and dirtiest hits the NHL has ever seen. In 2015 playoffs, Winnipeg Jets defenseman Dustin Bufflin made a crushing hit on Ottawa Senators forward Mark Stone, sending him to the bench with a micro fracture in his wrist. Stone's injury was a huge blow to the Senators' playoff hopes, but at least he didn't have to worry about holding his coffee with that hand for a while. Bufflin's hit was so powerful, it made Stone's ancestors feel it. Some say the hit was so hard, Bufflin's kids were born dizzy. All jokes aside, it was a bone-rattling hit that left everyone in the arena in awe and a little bit scared. During the 2018 playoffs, Boston Bruins forward Brad Marchand delivered a questionable hit to the New Jersey Devils' Marcus Johansson, sending him to the hospital with a concussion. Some people say Marchand was just trying to give Johansson a love tap, but others think he mistook him for a piñata. Marchand is no stranger to controversy, and this hit only added fuel to the fire. Johansson's injury was no laughing matter, but some people couldn't help but chuckle at Marchand's antics. Let's just say, Marchand's hit was so dirty, it made the ice want to take a shower. During the 2021 playoffs, Boston Bruins defenseman Charlie McAvoy delivered a massive hit on Montreal Canadiens forward Josh Anderson, sending him flying across the ice. Anderson's body language after the hit looked like he was auditioning for Cirque du Soleil. McAvoy's hit was a thing of beauty, like watching a bird in flight, or a cat knocking over a boss. Anderson eventually got back up, but he was definitely seeing stars. It was a hit that will be remembered for years to come, and probably felt by Anderson for just as long. We got a throwback for you guys. You probably weren't even born when this happened. In Game 6 of the 2003 Stanley Cup Final, New Jersey Devils defenseman Scott Stevens delivered a brutal hit to Anaheim Ducks forward Paul Correa, knocking him unconscious. Some people say Stevens hit Correa so hard, it knocked the Y out of his last name. Korea's brain was scrambled like an egg, but miraculously, he managed to score a goal later in the game. It was a hit that made the ice shake, the fans gasp, and Korea's mom wince. Stevens was known for his bone-crushing hits, but this one was in a league of its own. In the 2012 playoffs, Nashville Predators defenseman Shea Weber delivered a rough hit to Detroit Red Wings forward Henrik Zetterberg slamming his head into the glass like a toddler banging on a drum. Zetterberg's head was ringing like a church bell on Sunday, but he managed to finish the game. Some say Weber hit Zetterberg so hard, his ancestors felt it. The hit was a reminder that hockey is not a sport for the faint of heart, or head. Weber's hit was a thing of beauty, like watching a bowling ball knock down all the pins in the lane. In the 2019 playoffs, Washington Capitals forward Alex Ovechkin delivered a controversial hit to Carolina Hurricanes rookie Andrei Svechnikov, knocking him out cold. Svechnikov's head was spinning like a top, but Ovechkin showed no remorse. The hit was so brutal, it should have been rated PG-13. It was a reminder that Ovechkin is not just a great goal scorer, but also a fierce competitor. 
In the thrilling Game 6 of the 1999 Stanley Cup Final, New York Rangers captain Mark Messier delivered a crushing hit to Dallas Stars superstar Mike Medano. The hit was so hard, it looked like Medano had been hit by a freight train. But true to his reputation as a tough competitor, Medano refused to stay down for long. Despite the hit, Medano managed to stay in the game and continue fighting for his team. It was a moment that showcased both Messier's ferocity and Medano's resilience, making it one of the most memorable hits in Stanley Cup Final history. During a regular season game in 2011, Boston Bruins captain Zdeno Chara delivered a devastating hit to Montreal Canadiens forward Max Pacioretty. The hit was a moment that stunned both teams and the entire hockey world. The hit sparked a fierce debate about player safety and the need for better protective measures. responsibility of players and the league to ensure the safety of all athletes on the ice. We're throwing it way back with this one. In the first game of the 1970 Stanley Cup Final, Boston Bruins legend Bobby Orr delivered a crushing hit to St. Louis Blues forward Matt Pavlich. The hit was so hard, Pavlich was sent flying and crashed into the boards. It was a defining play in the game and set the tone for the rest of the series. Orr's hit was a testament to his strength and skill on the ice, as well as his fierce determination to win. It was a moment that has gone down in hockey history and solidified Orr's place as one of the greatest players of all time. During a regular season game in 2010, Pittsburgh Penguins forward Matt Cook delivered a controversial hit to Bruins star Mark Savard. The hit was so brutal, Savard was left lying on the ice motionless. It was a moment that sparked outrage among fans, players, and officials, and raised important questions about player safety and the need for better protective measures. While Cook was not penalized for the hit, it reignited a fierce debate about the role of violence in hockey and the responsibility of players to protect each other on the ice. During a heated playoff game in 2014, Chicago Blackhawks defenseman Brent Seabrook delivered a bone-crushing hit to St. Louis Blues captain David Backus. The hit was so ferocious, it sent Backus careening into the boards like a rocket. The impact was felt throughout the arena, leaving fans and players stunned. Despite the severity of the hit, Backus managed to stay in the game and continue to fight for his team. Seabrook's hit was a defining moment in the game, showcasing both his strength and his willingness to go to battle for his team. It was a moment that will go down in playoff history as one of the most memorable hits of all time. In a clash of the titans in 2018, Buffalo Sabres defenseman Rasmus Ristolainen unleashed a colossal hit on Pittsburgh Penguins forward Jake Gensel. The impact was so thunderous, it looked like something out of an action movie. Gensel was sent crashing into the boards with a resounding thud. Despite the brutal hit, Gensel bounced back up like a true warrior and kept fighting for his team. Ristolainen's hit was a moment of pure adrenaline and excitement that had fans on the edge of their seats. We're going way back in time once more. In 1996, Dallas Stars defenseman Darian Hatcher delivered a crushing hit to Chicago Blackhawks forward Jeremy Roenick. It was like watching a train collide with a car, as Roenick was sent flying like a paper airplane and crashing onto the ice. The impact was so intense, it felt like the entire arena shook. Despite the force of the hit, Roenick bounced back up like a true champion and continued to battle it out on the ice. Hatcher's hit was a moment of sheer intensity that left fans in awe and Roenick with a newfound respect for his opponent. In a game of fierce competitors in 2016, Washington Capitals defenseman Brooks Orpik delivered a crushing blow to Pittsburgh Penguins defenseman Oli Mata. It was like watching a wrecking ball demolish a building, as Mata was sent crashing into the ice. The impact was so bone jarring, despite the sheer force of the hit, Mata got back up and kept playing with a fire in his belly. Orpik's hit was a moment of pure grit and intensity that left fans breathless and the opposition in awe. For our last hit, we got something recent for you guys. During the 2021 playoffs, in a game that had all the intensity of a heavyweight title fight, 
Vegas Golden Knights' Ryan Reeves delivered a bone-crushing hit on Washington Capitals' Tom Wilson. As the two behemoths collided, it was like watching an unstoppable force meet an immovable object. Wilson was sent sprawling to the ice like a toddler, but true to his warrior spirit, he bounced back up and continued to fight. Reeves' hit was a moment of pure adrenaline and excitement that had fans cheering and opponents rethinking their strategy. If you enjoyed this video, you definitely enjoy watching the NHL's most disturbing injuries. With more to come on our channel, like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Get ready to witness the most jaw-dropping and bone-crushing moments in NHL history. Although some may find it controversial, we cannot deny that hockey is a physical game. No chance to defend. We will be highlighting some of the most brutal hits that have ever been captured on camera. Brace yourselves, this may not be for the faint-hearted. Alright guys, we're starting off with Milan Lucic going on a rampage in the Battle of Alberta during the 2022 playoffs as the Flames and Oilers engage in a brutal game. To start off, Lucic steamrolls a guy in the corner, but he's just getting started. He turns around and goes right for the legend himself, Connor McDavid, and absolutely smokes him and then brawl between the two teams ensue. It's safe to say the Flames and Oilers have a bit of a competitive rivalry going on. 2022 playoffs between Colorado Avalanche and St. Louis Blues with the series tied 1-1 in round two. The hit resulted in Samuel having a broken sternum, but to no one's surprise, he got back up. During a game between the Vancouver Canucks and the Toronto Maple Leafs, Alex Edler, a defenseman for the Canucks, hit Zach Hyman, a forward for the Leafs, with a high check. The hit resulted in Hyman falling to the ice and hitting his head, leading to him leaving the game with an injury. The situation leading up to the hit involved Hyman attempting to retrieve the puck in the Canucks zone. Edler, who was defending, skated towards Hyman and delivered the hit as he was releasing the puck. Edler was given a five-minute major penalty for charging and a game misconduct. After the hit, tensions flared between the two teams, with multiple players engaging in altercations. The Leafs scored on the ensuing power play, and the Canucks ultimately lost the game 3-2. Edler was later suspended for two games by the NHL Department of Player Safety for the hit. The Toronto Maple Leafs were playing against the New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden. In the second period, Leafs captain Dion Phaneuf collided with Rangers defenseman Mike Sauer in the corner, sending Sauer crashing to the ice with a serious injury. The hit sparked controversy among fans and analysts, with some arguing it was a clean hit, while others felt it was dangerous and dirty. The Rangers were angry and tensions on the ice were high, while Leafs fans praised Phaneuf's skill and strength. In the end, no disciplinary action was taken by the NHL, but the hit remained a hot topic of discussion for weeks afterward. Whether it was a moment of triumph or a moment of controversy, it was a moment that would be remembered by fans and players alike. On May 26, 2000, during Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals between the New Jersey Devils and the Philadelphia Flyers, Scott Stevens, a defenseman for the Devils, hit Eric Lindros, a forward for the Flyers, with a devastating open ice check. Leading up to the hit, Lindros was carrying the puck through the neutral zone when Stevens stepped up and delivered the hit, which was widely regarded as one of the hardest hits in NHL history. The hit was legal at the time, as Lindros had possession of the puck, and the Devils advanced to the Stanley Cup Finals, where they ultimately won the championship. Lindros, who had a history of concussions, missed the remainder of the playoffs and ultimately never played for the Flyers again, citing a lack of trust in the team's medical staff. The incident sparked debate about the role of hitting in hockey and player safety, leading the NHL to introduce new rules and protocols to better protect players from head injuries. The hit also became a defining moment in both players' careers, with Stevens gaining a reputation as one of the league's most fearsome hitters, and Lindros being forced to retire prematurely due to the toll of head injuries. Lindros was supposed to have a promising career. On December 17, 1991, during a game between the Boston Bruins and the New York Rangers, 
Ulf Samuelsson, a defenseman for the Rangers, delivered a knee-on-knee -knee hit to Cam Neely, a forward for the Bruins. The hit resulted in Neely suffering a serious knee injury that would ultimately cut his career short. Neely had the puck in the neutral zone when Samuelsson, who was known for his aggressive and physical style of play, delivered the hit. The hit was widely regarded as a cheap shot and sparked outrage among Bruins fans and players. Following the hit, Neely missed the remainder of the season and required multiple surgeries to repair the damage to his knee. While he attempted to make a comeback, he was never able to fully recover and was forced to retire at the age of 31. Next up, Zadorov came flying in like a bat out of hell and just crushed Jace with this massive hit. The impact was so intense, it felt like I was in the middle of an earthquake. And you know what's even crazier? Jace got back up and kept playing like nothing happened. I mean, this guy's got some serious Canadian toughness, eh? But let me tell you, that hit was no joke, man. It was like watching a scene from a Hollywood action movie. And if Zadorov keeps playing like that, he's gonna have a whole lot of people running scared on the ice. On May 3rd, 2001, during a playoff game between the Toronto Maple Leafs and New Jersey Devils, Ty Domi, a forward for the Maple Leafs, took a cheap shot on Scott Niedermeyer, a defenseman for the Devils. Scott Stevens, the captain of the New Jersey Devils, was outraged by the hit and criticized Domi for his actions. Stevens was known for his physical play and hard hits, but was also respected for his ability to play within the rules and avoid dirty plays. Following the hit, Domi was suspended for the remainder of the playoffs, which included two games in the second round against the Ottawa Senators and the entire Eastern Conference Finals against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Ladies and gentlemen, we got another cheap shot. This one might just be one of the worst cheap shots in NHL history, because the game wasn't even in play when it happened. On April 28, 1993, during a playoff game between the Washington Capitals and New York Islanders, Dale Hunter hit Pierre Turgeon while he was celebrating a goal? Turgeon scored a goal to give the Islanders a 5-1 lead. As he was celebrating, Hunter skated towards him from behind and delivered a blindside hit, causing Turgeon to fall to the ice with a shoulder injury. The incident caused a lot of controversy and anger, with Islanders fans and players outraged at Hunter's actions. Turgeon was unable to play in the next game due to his injury, and the Islanders ended up losing the series to the Capitals. Hunter faced a lot of criticism and scrutiny for the hit, and it became a defining moment in his career. Turgeon went on to have a successful career, but the incident remained a dark moment in his career, with some arguing that it prevented him from winning the Hart Trophy as the NHL's most valuable player that year. During a playoff game between the Washington Capitals and Pittsburgh Penguins, Tom Wilson hit Zach Aston Reese. The hit was deemed illegal and resulted in a broken jaw for Aston Reese, who was forced to leave the game. I mean, Wilson is known for his physical play, but that was just over the line. He broke the poor guy's jaw. And then he only gets a two minute penalty? That's crazy. During game one of the 2021 NHL playoffs between the Montreal Canadiens and Toronto Maple Leafs, Corey Perry, a forward for the Canadiens, accidentally collided with John Tavares, the captain of the Maple Leafs, causing a serious injury. Tavares was stretchered off the ice and taken to the hospital for evaluation. He was just minding his own business and then wham, Perry comes in and lays him out. And then, to add insult to injury, Perry didn't even get a penalty for it. That's just crazy. During Game 3 of the 2017 NHL playoffs between the Pittsburgh Penguins and Washington Capitals, Chris Letang, a defenseman for the Penguins, delivered a high hit on Marcus Johansson, a forward for the Capitals. Johansson was left injured and had to leave the game. What was he thinking, man? You gotta keep your head up out there, especially in the playoffs. Johansson got hurt and had to leave the game, and Letang got penalized for interference. It's crazy how these hits can change the whole outcome of a game, let alone a series. During a game between the Canadians and Senators, P.K. Subban, a defenseman for the Canadians, delivered a controversial slash on Mark Stone, a forward for the Senators. This was a dirty play by Subban, and he ended up getting kicked out for it. Evander Kane took out Radko Gudis. It was intense, man. Evander came in like a wrecking ball and just crushed Gudis with a massive hit. 
It was like watching a car crash on the ice. Kane just plowed through him like a bulldozer. The sound of the impact was like thunder in the arena, and the crowd went wild. I mean, that hit was so big, I'm pretty sure Gudis saw stars and was seeing double for a while after. It was like Kane was on a mission to lay him out, and he did it in spectacular fashion. Comment down below, what was your favorite brutal hit? Like and subscribe. Imagine this, third period, game seven. It's all on the line. You can hear the crowd chanting your team's name. You take a slap shot from the point. Some goals are so clutch, so skillful, so electrifying, they ignite the whole crowd. Stick around until the end as we cover the top 10 most electrifying NHL goals. First up, we got the one and only Connor McDavid. With two minutes left in a heated game against the Rangers, McDaddy, I mean McDavid, decided to take matters into his own hands. This man really made the New York Rangers look like a beer league hockey team. McDavid dangled through four Rangers and buried a backhander behind Georgiev to not only win the game, but also win the goal of the That's year. Not a statement. Next up, we got the Norris winner, Kale McCarr. In an intense overtime period, Kale McCarr absolutely puts the Blackhawks defenseman in a blender and puts it top shelf on Flurry. He baited a shot and forced the D to fall back before hitting a 360 and deking out the tendy. There's truly no other D-man like McCarr. Picture this, game seven, overtime. You're up against your rivals with the second round playoffs in sight. This was exactly what happened in 2011 for the Vancouver Canucks. See, Vancouver had always been stumped by the Blackhawks and had a streak of losing to them in the playoffs. Alex Burrows, however, decided that it was time. It's time to slay the dragon. With a few minutes into overtime, Burroughs snatched a puck from the air and slapped an absolute bomb to the top shelf, winning the game for the Knucks. This goal was definitely the most electrifying goal in Canucks history. Next up, we got a throwback. Buffalo Sabres vs New York Rangers. Overtime. Maxima Finneganov hits a slap shot through traffic that squeezes by the goalie. The commentators and crowd went absolutely nuts, and Maxim made sure to match their energy with his Superman Selly. Now, we got one of the most electrifying goals in NHL history. I witnessed this live, so let me tell you, this was insane. First round of the 2019 playoffs, San Jose Sharks vs Vegas Golden Knights. The Sharks had just come back from down 3-0 with less than 10 minutes left in the game. After witnessing their captain suffer a brutal injury, they were fired up and determined to win it for him. Eric Carlson passes it up the ice for Goodrow, who dangles through the defense and buries it home for the win. Just listen to that crowd. Gives me chills every time. Continuing on the theme of Game 7 overtime goals, we got the 2013 Eastern Conference quarterfinals. Boston Bruins vs Toronto Maple Leafs. Leafs fans, feel free to skip this one. I know this still stings. I'm devastated, man! Brad Marchand finds his line mate Bergeron, who puts the puck to the net. The goalie ends up saving it, but Patrice Bergeron finds his own rebound and buries it home for the win. One of these days, you'll make it past the first round, Leafs. One of these days. Huh. <sighs> Speaking of playoff winners, why not showcase one of the most electrifying goals of the decade? LA Kings vs New York Rangers, Game 5, Double OT. Martinez passes the puck up to Clifford, who passes it up and shoots. Lundqvist makes the save, but Martinez buries the rebound to win the Stanley Cup for his team on home ice. Just listen to the crowd, man. Truly gives me chills. Martinez did what every 8-year-old dreams of doing winning the Stanley Cup for their team. Next up, we got the Blue Jackets legend Rick Nash, who gets absolutely robbed by Washington Capitals goalie Holtby. Ovi picks up the rebound and absolutely flies past the D-man to put it five hole on Lundquist. The crowd goes absolutely electric. Sorry Rangers fans, seems like a lot of these clips are against you. 
We switching things up to international hockey now. The gold medal game in the 2010 Vancouver Olympics. The crowd was a sea of red, repping Canada from coast to coast. The game had been back and forth, with Team USA tying it up late. With 12 minutes left in overtime, Crosby passed it to Aginla, who made a sick play and passed it back to Sid. Crosby buried the shot, and it would go down in history as the golden goal that won Canada the gold medal. Come on now, of course there's going to be another McKinnon beauty. In 2017, in a game against the Florida Panthers, McKinnon showed everyone why he's one of the best in the league. McKinnon dangles through four guys and roofs the puck before Reimer even knew what happened. Absolutely filthy. Next up, we got the Edmonton Oilers in their first playoff game in over 10 years. You can hear the crowd absolutely ecstatic to see their team in the playoffs once again. Clefbaum sneaks a shot right under the diving defender and through Jones's five hole. The crowd absolutely erupts as they finally get to witness a playoff goal in what felt like forever. Just look at that sea of orange. Aight, time for a throwback. We're going all the way back to the 08 season. Columbus Blue Jackets vs Phoenix Coyotes. With less than 30 seconds left in the game, Rick Nash chases Dangles through the D and splits the defense before burying it in the back of the net. This might be one of Nash's most insane goals of his career. Just listen to the crowd. They know they just witnessed greatness. Later, at the end of the season, the goal was even nominated for an SB award in the category of best play of the season. Now for a fairy tale goal. If you've been following the league for a while, you know that there's very few two players in history that have had better chemistry than the Sedin twins. On their very last home game, the Sedins decided to give Vancouver fans one last Sedinary moment. With a few minutes left in OT, Daniel passed it to Henrik, who faked a shot and passed it back to Daniel. Daniel let one rip and sealed the deal. The whole crowd was on their feet, and the Coyote bench even stayed behind to congratulate the Sedin twins on an amazing career. Last but not least, we got one more Sedinary moment. In a game against his old goaltender and the Florida Panthers, Vancouver Canucks captain Henrik Sedin gets a feed from his brother Daniel and scores against his former goalie to get his 1,000th point of his career. The crowd gave him a standing ovation and even Luongo had to come over and congratulate him. From the incredible toe drags and deeks to the wicked wristers, these goals have captivated hockey fans around the world. 